Hey guys, welcome back to World of Tanks. My name is Bruce and today I want to show you how you can use the benefits of an autoloader to your advantage. Dive in and start playing tanks like the GSO 1008 more successfully. Let's go. I already made an autoloader tutorial which is linked right here. After a while I think it is time to once again talk about how to play autoloader tanks and in this video I want to give you further tips and tricks to showcase how you can use the specific autoloaders to your advantage. Today I want to particularly talk about autoloaders which have a super long reload time but on the other hand a high damage potential per clip. Examples are the Badger 25T, the MX5100 or this tank, the GSO 1008. I will show and explain my playstyle and give you 5 important tips so that you can be more successful with playing these tanks. So as I said in this video I want to showcase the GSO 1008. And let's right away start with my first tip and that is use the short term firepower of your autoloader. You don't want to trade one for one because of your super high firepower. And here you might ask well why what do you mean Bruce with super high firepower? The DPM of the GSOR is 1534. If you go to tanks GG then this is what is depicted on the website. Well, this is the overall DPM of this tank. If you take the six seconds of the intra clip reload all combined together with the 44.05 seconds of the clip reload. And if you then divide this by 50 and multiply it by 60, this is the DPM of this tank. So the overall DPM calculation. However, if you only take the six seconds of the intra clip reload, and divide your clip potential of 1280 uh, by 6 and then multiply it by 60 then you get the I would call it the short term DPM or the short term firepower of your tank which is 12,800 so compared to an autoloader which has basically one maybe two shots within six seconds you have 1280 uh, potential damage and so your DPM in this short period of time is actually 12,800 so what I want to say is those autoloaders have an extremely high amount of DPM in the time where you are re where, where you are emptying your clip and then you have a very long period where you have to reload the clip so you want to use this insane firepower advantage so how can you use it well you have to have a situation in which your opponent is unable to hide behind cover because you do not want to trade one for one and you have to find a situation where and where in which you have support just like in this situation and a situation in which you can hide and basically not take a shot during your reload and so this is a perfect situation and yeah we make three shots onto the Progetto 46 fortunately we do not take any damage and let's see can we get another shot and yes another shot and so with only one clip in a very short period of time be it about 10 seconds we managed to get 1300 damage this is the superb firepower that only an autoloader offers you to play and to use in world of tanks now with this knowledge about this insane short-term dpm you can actually make use of it and use it in order to influence the game and to basically also win a flank. So for example on this map I do not choose a tank destroyer static defensive position but I choose to go to the heavy lane because after all the GSO 1008 also does have a good mobility and I want to use this short term firepower in order to win the heavy flank for me and for my team so i managed to go there i am relo reloading the premium ammunition which has 324 millimeters of penetration which is which is superb on the gsor and now i want to add this once again short term firepower in order to win this flank so let's see how it goes there's the gsor there are other tanks that's one 
That is two. I take a shot, but that is not a problem at all. That is three. And that is four. Nice. So the Scorpion, nice. He is not able to hit me. So as I have the support of my heavy tanks, I do not have to be afraid of an adversary tank trying to push me out and trying to make multiple shots onto my tank in the period in which I reload my, my uh, clip and so where I am vulnerable and so I simply need to fall back into cover, reload my full clip and then I want to use my, my uh, high short term firepower once again in order to help my team to win the, the game because after all the other strength of an outloader is you can take out multiple tanks in a very short period of time and so see the scorpion g is not turning around now i need to take out the uh, canavan because he is actually able to turn around his gun and so one two three and a fourth shot and with only two clips i have managed to help my team to win the heavy lane in no time whatsoever so this is the strength and this is how you can make use of this strength in an auto loader tank all right so let's start with the first game we're spawning on serene coast in a tier 8 match and let's first of all take a look at the map and see where we can make use of the insane firepower Spawning on Serene Coast in the north with the GSO 1008, there are multiple options. You can play on a defensive TD position like here, here, or maybe here. But with the knowledge of this superb short-term firepower, I want to play more aggressively. And in my opinion, this C1 position here is kind of the strategic position on the map. And so I want to add my firepower to my team, to the fight so that I can help my team to win this strategic position. Yeah, so this is where we want to go and no, of course, with this, with this advantage in our tank, of course we do not want to play defensively static like a regular TD, but we want to fight where the fight takes place and we want to add our firepower into the fight in order to win the strategic position for our team. So, uh, meanwhile, looks like our heavy tanks are, for the most part, proceeding to the south, which is not good per se. Simply because, in my opinion, the C1 position is the most important position on the map. But I think we have enough support in order to make one clip and then maybe retreat and go to a more defensive position. So, let's see. So, one. There's one. Nice. And there's two. And this Rusk is... Uh, almost already sent back into the garage and let me see can he be taken out now can we all right and uh, here's where i have tip number two for you um in a tank like the gsor you have to try to fully be aimed in before you take a shot because yes on one hand you have a very short term high firepower during your six seconds intra clip reload on the other hand if you do not connect a shot then this dpm is reduced significantly so this dpm this high short term firepower is only high if you manage to penetrate every shot and the drawback of those auto loading tanks like the gsaw like the like the Badger 25T and also like like other um, autoloader tanks with with uh, with a high clip reload is that usually the gun handling has some drawbacks. For example, the dispersion value or the aim time. And so what you need to do is, especially in a tank destroyer like the G, so you have to fully aim in your shots so that you basically penetrate every shot that you take because once again if you do not penetrate every shot then your dpm your overall dpm during this six seconds uh, intra clip reload is significantly reduced so another thing you have to you have to take into consideration is the bloom after firing and once again you can go to tanks.gg and take a look at the dispersion value after firing so 
in the GSO 1008 it is 3.5 which is a pretty bad value so this means that the the um, your your uh, what is it called the the short ring actually blooms out quite a lot after each shot and so you have to basically aim in a bit more than the actual intra clip reload takes so the intra clip reload is two seconds but you want to aim further in in order to give your shot a higher percentage of actually hitting the target as you can see in this situation so that is what you want to do only in close quarters fight do you want to basically take the second shot after instantaneously after the intra clip reload has finished so yeah that's what you need to keep in mind all right so let's concentrate back onto the game we still have three shots in the magazine and let's see what we can do the the game is already won simply because we managed to win the important position with our firepower of our auto loading tank and meanwhile as we had lots of heavy tanks on the other side of the map we actually also managed to win this flank and so here you go so um that's how we could easily win the game so there's the scorpion unfortunately he bounces this sh this shot and now i simply have to fall back and try to reload my clip play defensively so that he doesn't push me out but of course i want to make one or maybe two or maybe three more shots and so i want to be nonetheless the first tank which arrives at the position the only thing i want to make sure is that i do not get taken out by an adversary tank so i'm a bit cautiously right here here we go i didn't want to take this shot now i am fully aware that the scorpion is able to take a shot onto me but i don't care because now my clip is reloaded and so i can now take further on shots and i can take them out yeah i think this is a perfect example on how to play a tank like the gsor 1008 All right, second game in the GSO 1008. This time we are spawning on Stutzjanki. And once again, let's first of all take a look at the map and see what options we have. Spawning on Stutzjanki in the west with the GSO 1008, you have several options. One is to get to go to a defensive position like so, or maybe to the north like to this position. The other one, which I highly recommend, is to play more offensively and to instantaneously use the high firepower that I was talking about in this video. So I like to go to this position and then punish adversary tanks which are making hardcore pressure into this ditch. All in all, in my opinion, this southern ditch here is the strategic position and chances are that if you win this ditch here, you will further on win the game. So I like to add my firepower in this area in order to win this position of the map yes so particularly in a top tier situation i want to play offensively and add my firepower to the game and to where it is necessary so i certainly do not want to stand still at the rear of the map at the beginning of the game but i want to go where the fight takes place so um, on this map, in my opinion, it is imperative, at least for the most part, to win the southern flank because the southern flank is which most of the time decides which team actually wins the game. So, here's my third tip for you, and I know that I point this out in every, almost in every tutorial, but especially, this is especially true for an autoloading tank in which you want to surprise your adversaries you want to be patient so be patient especially in an autoloader tank like the gso 1008 or in another autoloader tank which has a long clip reload so in an autoloader you are tempted to use your firepower advantage as soon as possible just like i pointed out in the previous videos and in the previous gameplays However, if you don't be patient, you won't make more than one clip. And if you want to play your tank more successfully, of course, you have to be able to um, to make more damage as only one clip. Because uh, 1,280 damage in the G-Saw 
is not a good result in such a tank and it's simply also would mean that you would not be able to to bring this firepower to the fight to and and uh, to not help your team throughout the game so you want to be and you need to be patient and you need to to basically try to let adversary tanks make mistakes and drive into positions where in which you have set up a a defensive position or a position from which you can punish those adversary tanks that's your job in an autoloader tank and herefore you need to be patient so that is super super important so in this situation here you go um this tank is spotted and so we can get more damage simply because we are patient and we are waiting in this situation i i thought in this uh in this situation that i could destroy the house which is not the case and so i go into the reload uh, once again so the mx 1357 is spotting the adversary team he has lost quite some of it of its hp and now the juto is making a pretty bad mistake if you ask me because um in this position you can um you're susceptible to crossfire from the middle so from the is3 position and so this is not where you want to go because if a tank would be behind the building, then you would be proxy spotted all day long. And once again, so this means that you would be susceptible to cross shots from the middle. All right, so what do we want to do? Well, we want to stay patient and maybe this tank is spotted once again. Here you go. So we are actually encountering a good player, which is able to make a... Um, a blind shot into this bush because uh, he knows that we have previously targeted this tank from this position so a very good player on the adversary team nonetheless um, I am currently thinking of relocating and going to another position looks like our team is making hardcore pressure on the heavy lane on the C7 position and D6 position but that's how it is so we might want to relocate and go into the middle and support our team from the middle mm, let me see so juto is doing nothing and our light tank has been taken out of the game that is not too good but once again we want to think about every step that we are doing in this tank can we get a shot onto those tanks? No, unfortunately not. But I should, you know, I think the building is in the way. Yeah, yeah, this building is in my... Basically blocking my line of fire. And so, you know what? I want to advance into the middle. I should take the left-hand side of the building so that I do not take a shot from the position where the Kanon Panzer was uh, previously located. And so I want to go into the middle. I cannot push on this flank because the worst thing you can do in, in such an autoloader tank is to push on your own. Because once you've emptied your clip, even if you connect all four shots and even if you make this damage, you will be susceptible. Enemy players will know this and you will be taken out. And so that's not what you, what you want to do. Actually, you must not fight on your own in such a tank. Only in a situation where you can escape and in which you can retreat so for example if you play the bad chat 25t you know that this tank is super mobile and so chances are that you manage to actually escape but um, the gso 1008 is fast yes but as a td it doesn't have the, the the best mobility and so i might get taken out okay and i have to help the two tool the two toe sorry so bam i can take this tank out nice and um, hopefully the Juto does not get pushed out by the Burrusk and the Kanoniak Panzer 105. Um, meanwhile, maybe I can punish an adversary tank which is on this little ridge line if uh, this player makes a mistake. So this is what I am um, looking for. Our t okay, here we go. Okay, that is not a possibility. Very unfortunate. But once again, we only made 1,400 damage so far. Um, seven minutes into the game. But we nonetheless want to be patient. 
because there is more damage to come and the chance will arise the opportunity will arise in which we can basically surprise adversary tanks and then empty our clip so let's see how it goes um i think the juto is in a very bad position because the burrusk and also the canon jagdpanzer will be able to flank this tank and so maybe make damage out of the southern position yeah where i where the where the map is uh, currently pinged so, yeah that's what i was trying to say okay but uh, there's no chance we can help him and um, we certainly do not want to throw away our tank um, simply because this player is making a huge mistake so let's see how can we win this game so there's a tree knocked down unfortunately there's no tank spotted and yeah, the Juto is now taken out. But that's just how it is. Okay, so let me see. Okay, and... Um, let me take a shot. Let's fully aim in. Here you go. Okay, super unfortunate. I'm spotted. I can actually make one more shot, which is good. But yeah, of course I'm spotted. You know what? There's an opportunity. Here is an opportunity. So I take the reload. And I follow the, the Vipera. The Vipera is still full HP. He has an insanely strong frontal armor. And as long as I support him, adversary tanks will not be able to flank him. And that is our opportunity. So here it comes. That's what I am looking for. And now I'm trying to hit this guy. And I'm trying to basically um, protect him from flank attacks from a tank like the SHPTK, but also from the Burras. Okay, the Burras is already... No, there's the other Burras still in the game, yeah. And so I want to hide and not be exposed because, as I said, I want to surprise the adversary tanks. That's what I want to do. Okay, looks like there's no tank here in this position. So, of course, I want to advance because I want to win the game for my team. And let's see. Oh, here you go. Here it is. And let's fall back. Let's pretend that I'm weak. And maybe he advances. Okay, the, the Vipera advances, so I also need to advance. And then maybe this tank takes the easier target for him, which is my tank. And nice. I can track him and I can take him out. Excellent. So that's that is the situation that i am looking for in an autoloader tank i want to be patient as i showed you in this game and then i want to simply wait for the opportunity to arise and for the situations to come in which i can make my damage and in which i can use my autoloader firepower potential all right so now i want to um see what i can do in order to win the game so there's only two more tanks and i think both of which are behind the ridge line so i want to blank and then proceed behind this ridge line i still have 821 um hp to to trade plus the vipera is making pressure and so i can in increase the chance of winning the game if i also continue to make pressure alongside with the vipera so that if he's targeted i can then simply once again here go use this opportunity in order to make damage here go nice i can take out this tank and now we have only two artillery systems remaining i made 3500 damage and i think there's maybe more to come in this game but para has been taken out which is unfortunate unfortunate for him but which is good for me because i only need to reload our clip okay this Got, this arty got hit so i can basically ram him and take him out excellent meanwhile my clip is reloading and i can make more damage okay the the adversary artillery is of course aiming towards my position which is not a problem at all because i still have 403 hp and so i simply need to wait and here you go fully aim in because there is a wreck covering the artillery i want to spot him and so, yeah, I think this was an excellent example of how successful you can be in such an old tank 
if you manage to stay patient. So overall, 3,800 damage in the Gisor and another fantastic result. Alright, third and last game in the Gisor 1008. This time we are spawning on Safe Haven and let's first of all take a look at the map and see what options we have. Spawning on Safe Haven in the east with the Gisor 1008, you have several options. As I explained earlier, I want to play more offensively, especially in a top tier scenario and I want to bring my firepower to the to the game. So you can do this with uh, brawling alongside with your heavy tank and then you have to conduct second line gameplay in order to not lose all of your HP at the beginning of the game. But I prefer to play here and to add my firepower to the side which is more dynamic, so the medium flank. And where I can, um, where I have a much higher chance of penetrating the adversary tanks, which are slightly armored TDs or medium tanks or light tanks on this side of the map. Now we are spawning in a top tier scenario, so in a tier six matchup. So let's see how brutal the GSO 1008 and an auto loader, which is top tier, can be. So um, we want to go to the northern position, we could also brawl alongside with the heavy tanks, however in my opinion or I, I do not want to risk losing uh, a lot of HP at the beginning of the game and I simply want to make sure that I stay alive until the end game because uh, after all the longer I can stay in the game the, the higher my influence is and as a top tier tank I want to have the highest influence in the game because then the chances of actually winning the game are significantly increased so that is my that is my gameplay or my my uh, my intent in this in this game all right here you can see the relatively poor power to weight ratio of the GSO which is 14.66 stock yes it can go up to 60 kbh however due to the slow power to weight ratio and the terrain resistance values it actually only manages to go like let's say 40 45 or so and you hardly ever reach 60 kph top speed um, unless you go down slow all right so i want to go to this position and then if this tank makes a mistake sorry Buras, uh, that i have to push you yes here you go okay the first shot was not a hit once again you should try to uh, aim in your shots which i was previously talking about um, so that you actually hit them. Looks like the adversary team is making hardcore pressure in on the northern, on the southern flank, actually on the medium flank. And so I want to retreat. I want to reload my full clip, and I want to go to a more defensive position so that so that I can. Yeah, that that's what I was that I was what, sorry what I was expecting. If the team has won the middle, so the J6 position, then chances are that those light tanks or medium tanks are going up the hill in order to proxy spot you from this position. So you have to retreat if you do not want to take damage. Alright, um, adversary projectors making hardcore pressure, but you know what? Not against an auto-loading tank, my friend, and so I can take him out. And this is extremely important simply because this is the most dangerous tank. Of the adversary team maybe um, alongside with the Buras so that's very helpful that we could take out this tank so all right what can we do we have lost this tank and now here's my here's my next tip use the, the clip reload in order to relocate and in order to analyze the game and try to foresee where you can surprise your enemies next. This is actually like the, the long clip reload is a disadvantage, of course it is. On the other hand, you can see this as an advantage because it gives you the time to thoroughly assess what is going on on the map and I highly, highly recommend you to check the minimap during this period of time and if you do not know what minimap awareness is, then check out my video that I made on uh, on minimap awareness, which is linked right here. So I want to use the 44 seconds um, of my tank in order to analyze the situation, in order to see where I can surprise the adversaries next. Because if I can get the surprising factor, then 
I can most likely make more damage in the game. Alright. The next tip is, and that is tip number tip number five. Do not insist of making the whole clip at one time. If you trade two for zero, so in uh, in this case uh, with 320 alpha damage, it would be 640 damage without getting any shot in return, then this is a superb trade and it is a much better trade than for example 3 for 1 so making what is it 960 damage but taking let's say 400 damage 300 damage um, in return from an adversary tank so you always have to consider the reload time of your opponent tank and you have to recognize that once you take a shot you will be spotted and as soon as you are spotted, if the adversary temps recognize that you are spotted, it will take about, let's say, three seconds until they have pointed their gun towards you and waited just a little bit in order to, a to, to aim in their shots. So you have about three seconds of time. And in the, in the case of the G-Sword, this means that with my intra-clip reload of two seconds, I can perfectly make two shots and I will let's say with 99% or 95% not take any damage in return but if I wait longer then of course chances are significantly increased that I will take damage in return and chances are further that not only one adversary tank is looking towards me but also other tanks and so in this case I would maybe take not only one hit but maybe two or three or four and so my trade would be much worse so do not insist of making the full clip that's what i want to suggest so in a perfect example is or can be seen right here this tank has turned his turret towards me so i certainly only want to make one shot at a time now the the is2 has uh, or the is has moved further aggressively and so i want to stop him so in this case i'm willing to take a shot and as this tank does not have significant armor compared to the penetration values of my tier 8 tank I am very happy to take one shot but then to give two in return so now that he's uh, down to being one shotable all right so now I want to reload the clip and then I want to surprise the adversary tanks once again now the strength of an autoloader tank is that you can take out multiple tanks at a time and that's what I want to make use of in this situation so the game is certainly not over Plus, as those tanks are for the most part low tier tanks, they might not be able to take me out. At least uh, uh, if I don't um, take the IS into consideration, which I'm fortunately managing to take, to take out in this situation. So once again, I want to take one shot and I want to hide instantaneously so that I'm not spotted again. So nice. Our team, oh, here you go, here you go. I want to make one shot and I want to go back into cover so that this tank does not have a chance of actually hitting me. Another perfect example. In this situation, once again, it is imperative to not make the full clip. Here you go, one shot. And as you can see, he even managed to get a shot in return. But as he was moving backward, his gun was very, or his, uh, his um, reticle was bloomed out. And so he he was unable to make a shot onto me once again i want to go into the reload and then i want to use my my clip in order to finish off the other tanks looks like in this situation our team is playing aggressively simply because it is now a 2v2 situation and of course as i want to be the guy making all the damage i want to increase i want to advance into this position so that once my clip has reloaded i am able to empty it and to make more damage okay and i want to be fully aimed in once this hellcat tries to relocate and to uh, basically to hide can i get a shot uh, no and now maybe i can get a shot let's see go on one more shot okay no not on through the hellcat but maybe onto this tank. Okay, let's aim in and bam, another shot. Nice, and this tank is taken out. 
All right, so um, yeah, those are my five basic tips for you. If you play an autoloader tank, you can see them right here. And I think if you follow those tips and tricks, you will be much more successful if you're playing an autoloader tank, which has a long reload time, once again, like the GSO 1008, like the Badger 25T, like the, the, the Badger 25T AP, or like the, like the MX50 series, all those tanks have a very long intra clip reload, oh, sorry, very long clip reload, and a huge autoloader potential. And I think this is how we can make use um, of your autoloader clip potential and use this insane firepower in order to help your team to win the game. All right, guys, that was it for today with another autoloader tutorial. What do you think about this tank class? Do you like to play autoloader tanks? Are you able to make this high firepower but also this high reload time work? Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below. And as always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. This really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. If you find this video extremely helpful, then feel free to support me via Super Thanks. This way you can make a one-time donation. You just have to click this button underneath the video. If you adore this channel and you want to consistently support me, then consider subscribing to my channel or become a member once again with the click of a button underneath the video. Thanks a lot and I see you next time in another World of Tanks video.